I'm Mark Ford, coordinator of percussion at the University of North Texas. And I'm happy to be at Innovative Percussion today talking about music, mallets, and life. I was so excited to be part of this team with uh, Innovative Percussion, of course, and the first mallets that I had input to were our, our first mallets. This is the Soloist series. Eric Johnson and I put these together to create a new sound. Everything else at that time was going toward acrylic balls, really light, really high-end, lots of high partials. And the, to me, it just didn't make the instrument sound very well. And I think they're now still the, like the best-selling mallets in the last 20 years. I will tell you, on my bulletin board in my office at UNT, there's a little tiny business card that says, Eric is the president and I'm the vice president. Well, there was a time when I was a PAS president that it kind of freaked out some people because I've never owned the company. Eric is the president, he's the owner, he's the boss. I've always been the consultant, but at that time we were using the president and vice president thing, and I've always been super proud of it, and that's why it sits up there on that bulletin board. So I was using the mallets that we had at the time were the Soloist series and William Mersch mallets, I think were already out. We looked at those and I told him, I said, you know what we need is, I said, we really want a beautiful legato mallet, something that has a beautiful tone, but yet really projects really well and not doesn't sound too woofy on the marimba, something that's really gonna push some air to the back of the hall. For me, mallets are like a toolbox. I hear a sound in my head, I want to be able to open my toolbox and get the right tool. And we've all stood in front of that Phillips head screw that we need to take out, but we have a flathead screwdriver in our hand and we're like, we can make this work, you know, somehow, but it doesn't work too well. You need to have the right tool. In this case, you need to have the right mallet to create the right music, the right spirit of the music. And we came up with my series of mallets. What's the difference between these two? Slightly smaller ball on the blue mallet, and so it's lighter, it's more articulate. On the green mallets, it's really the same yarn, it's a different color, and wears really well, it's, but it's wrapped in very similar style, but yet the ball is larger, it's heavier, it has a slightly larger uh, latex around it, and it creates a much darker, stronger projection. So what's the first thing that we wanna do when we're choosing a mallet? to create the best sound that we can, given the composer's intentions. Sometimes you know very clearly through composer's indications, and sometimes you have to do some research to know more about it. But the concept of listening to the instrument and hearing how the mallet that you're choosing is creating the sound is part of your artistic capabilities. You can make a decision. It's not to be tied to one sound. One sound is not good, the other sound is evil. These are two very capable sounds that you might choose from, but yet you want to choose the one that you feel matches that composer's intention. For example, like the Bach cello suites, the A12s sound beautiful on some of the cello, especially the preludes. Really beautiful legato style, not a very strong articulation that would give a, a hiccup, if you would, to the attack, but yet a very beautiful connected a legato sound, where if you move to another, maybe uh, one of the Allegro movements, where the 803s and the 804s sound wonderful. So one thing that you need to know about marimba articulations, what sounds perfect to you on the keyboard does not always exactly translate to the audience. Depends on the hall and the number of people there, but typically the size and the resonance of the hall is the first case. For most marimbas, it's 50% it's the instrument, 50% the room. For example, the 803 sounds wonderful in my practice room, a little tiny little room. And then I get into a big room and all of a sudden the 803 for that particular passage just doesn't seem to cut it. Why? Because you need to move that sound so much further in the space and have the articulation to reach the audience. So I will move to like the 814s to, to get that, even though in the practice room, it was maybe a little too heavy. It seemed a little too harsh. And that's common. It happens a lot with vibraphone as well. How is it going to really relate to the audience? And that's, that's part of our uh, charge as a musician and as a percussionist. Color is something that percussion is all about. We feel color, uh, whether we're touching the marimba or touching a cymbal or touching a drum, we're always talking about color. I want to say about innovative percussion's versatility the number of mallets that you have choices from and the types of colors that are available to you really I didn't have when I was in college. But making decisions 
about which of these amazing IP mallets are going to give you your sound is important. And it doesn't matter whose name is on it, it doesn't matter what number's on it, what matters is does that sound touch you in terms of being able to communicate the composer's intentions. And really that's what Innovative brings to the world. And God bless them because man, they are just rocking it with the mallets and the choices, the xylophone colors, oh my goodness, is so much involved. If you're listening to this thing and you haven't really checked out only maybe some of the marimba mallets, they have so much more to offer, so please check out the catalog because it's awesome.